Hey everybody, welcome to Believe TV. My name is Bruce Sampson. Um, if this is your first time joining us, I welcome you and I want you to know this is an interactive forum and that we would welcome your participation. So if you have anything that you want, we know each other. So years ago in Southern California, I used to produce uh, the singing competition. So it's similar to like an American Idol or The Voice or you know whatever, right? And it was for young people and there were three different age categories and I did it for several years and there were three rounds to it. So there's an audition round where we would go to different uh, shopping centers and malls uh, to actually uh, hold the initial audition. Uh, then we would whittle it down and then those people would be, we'd choose the people who would go to the semifinals, which would happen a month later. And we'd hold that at you know, some other venue and we'd bring in a different set of judges and then we'd whittle that down to the top 10 uh, or the top five, depending on which year it was, uh, to uh, in each age category. And then those folks would go on to a professional theater and we bring in industry judges uh, and celebrities who would uh, then judge and give feedback and all of that. And then we choose a winner and all of that. So uh, this particular year, um, Senya won for her, her category, uh, for her age category. And that's how we initially met. Uh, and I don't want to give any more away uh, until we uh, get her on here. Um, so I am going to go ahead and bring her on and introduce the very talented and wonderful Senya. Hey. Hi. <laughs> hey, it's been a minute. How are you doing? It has. I'm doing good. How about you? Pretty good. Pretty good. I'm so glad that, uh, that you could be here. Um, I'm so happy to see you. It makes me, I, I can't stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's been, it's been a very long time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we're going to spend the next little bit uh, catching up and, um, and uh, introducing you to some people, folks who may not know you and to all of your fans and friends and stuff, you know, maybe they'll give a, a deeper insight. Um, so first of all, here's a question that I should have asked you beforehand, but do you prefer just Senya or do you want your full name? Like, how do you usually? Uh, yeah, so I usually just go by my first name. I just go by Senya. Okay, okay, yeah. perfect, perfect. Okay, so let me ask you, and we're not gonna go chronologically, so we're gonna kind of jump around a little bit. So let's okay. start with the competition. Um, so do you remember how old and what, uh, how old you were and what grade you were in uh, when you auditioned for our competition? Um, yeah, so I was a freshman in high school, so I was um, 14, wait, was it, no, I was, so it was, I was either 14 or, I was 15. 15, okay. Yeah, I was 15. And do um, you, you happen to remember where the audition was? Yeah, so it was in Temecula, it was at the Promenade Mall. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. um, so... Uh, tell me more about that because like I have a certain way that I remember it, which may not be accurate. <laughs> and, yeah. Also combined with our friend Jamel, who who relays the story in a way, and like sometimes I'm like, Jamel, are you sure? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, um, yeah, I was 15 because it was a a year before audition for The Voice, and I was I just turned 16, so. I, I was 15. Um, yeah, so I, I'd gone to, I don't remember how I heard about the singing competition. I think it might have just been like a sign or something at the, at the mall um, right. or online or I don't really remember. I just remember wanting to do it. Um, it had been very new to me, like singing, um, like publicly, I guess. Like people didn't really, I, I was still battling with, wanting to sing but being too afraid to because I, I thought I was bad. <laughs> um, so, and I thought my parents were lying to me that I was good. Like, I thought they just felt bad and they didn't want to tell me the truth. So I remember telling them, like, I want to hear from somebody that doesn't know me because then they'll tell me the truth because then they'll say, like, oh, you're okay or you're good or, you know, you're not very good. So we'd, we'd heard about the competition at the time, I think it was called Inland Icon. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and I remember I practiced my song 
and I went and like stood in line <laughs> to like stand on the little stage and uh, and sing or not the stage like in front of the, the table I think you guys had a table and um, I remember I just remember like I was wearing a purple sweater that it was so hot and I was so nervous so it was like just like a lot of things were I felt like were going wrong so I was like they're not they're not gonna like me I'm not gonna make it through and I remember practicing in the parking lot the garage parking lot with my mom because I was so terrified and I um started I was just crying like I cried for the entire ride to the mall and in the parking garage because I told my mom I don't think I can do it I don't think I can sing in front of these people and so finally I went, waited in line, and then I remember I sang a little bit of the song, and uh, I just remember, like, no one said anything, so in my head I was like, oh, they hate it, <laughs> they don't like me, they think I'm bad, and I was like, okay, at least I know now, and then I think uh, Jamal and then uh, you guys kind of gave me feedback, and um, and that to me, I remember that was the first time I ever heard from anybody other than my family that um, they enjoyed my singing. I remember you guys had really good feedback to give me and I didn't even, I didn't know, I didn't know those things about me. I didn't know that I was good or that um, I like, I had any kind of potential or anything. So for me, I just, I just remember having a, a boost of confidence um, in my singing and in myself, um, hearing that from you guys. Um, but yeah, that was, that was my uh, first time I think ever I mean that wasn't the first time I think I ever sang in front of people other than my family wow that's incredible so so let me tell you from my perspective <laughs> what was going on that day so um I actually did not hear your audition initially um I think we had someone there um my friend Dan I think was videotaping so I saw it later okay um but I didn't hear it but after you know I was kind of running around making sure everything was running uh right and stuff but Jamel came up to me after it was over and said, um, and he handed me your information. He said, here's your winner right here. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that year that when you auditioned that that was the first of, I think we like did four of them in different locations. And I think yours was the first because I remember saying to him, Jamel, it's our first one. We haven't even seen, you know, like, and yeah. he goes, I'm telling you, this is your winner right here. And I'm like, okay, okay. And so, you know, I didn't, I didn't really believe in, you know, I'm like, it's too early to know that or whatever. And then in the semifinals was the first time I actually heard you like live sing. And I was like, whoa, I think he may be right. <laughs> like, that's really cool. Um, and then, you know, of course, in the finals, you know, you won. And so, you know, yeah. So that was awesome. So, so tell me what was, um, I mean, if you want to talk about each phase, you can. But if you want to just jump to the, the finals and what was that like for you? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the whole thing was just kind of crazy for me. Because, I mean, I remember, like, because I think back to that all the time. I think I always I bring that competition up a lot. Um, just because for it was very significant for me. Just the, because I, I try to, you know, explain to people, like, it wasn't just like, oh, I'm afraid to sing in front of people. It was like, I was like deathly afraid, like paralyzed, like cry. I, my uncle once heard like, oh, she sings good. Like, let me hear you. And I mean, it was just my uncle. And I was started bursting into tears. And I like, for some reason, I just had this fear inside of me of like, I want to sing so bad. But for some reason, I just feel like I can't. Um, so that competition, I think, just opened a door for me to finally like explore um, that and like be able to finally sing and um, so I just the the finale like the final I remember I was like there's no way that I'm gonna win because there's a lot of really talented people um, like all these kids are so talented and I I just don't I think it was still hard for me to believe people when they're like oh you're good you know you you like your voice is um is good and it's unique and I was like no like there's so many people that are so talented um and I I just remember being nervous the whole time like I think I um I remember 
being in the back with like a whole bunch of the young girls that were in my age group and they were so confident and like had these like dresses on and practicing like they were rehearsing and like like kind of just like moving like doing like dances and stuff like with their songs and just being like um just like performing and I was like I just stand there (laughs) I was like I was like there's no way I'm gonna win like these girls just have so much more confidence and I just don't think that I'm gonna be able to like out like not outshine but like you know just there like I would be like people would be drawn to me more than them because they were like you know doing all this stuff um and that was like so scary for me but I just remember thinking you know what I'm just gonna go out there I'm gonna sing you know everybody's different everybody has their own you know thing about them that makes them who they are and I just went out there and I I sang and um I think I still have a video I think we we got a video of that night um yeah I think they were yeah you guys were recording it and um I got like a cd I haven't seen them so long but um that was yeah I just I just remember um the judges um at the time gave me some really really amazing feedback that I think I remember like crying I cried. I got off the stage and I cried because I was like, I can't believe that people actually, um, you know, would think those things about me. Um, so yeah, it was just, it's a, it's a really special, it was a really special moment for me. It was, I, I still think about it, you know, whenever I talk to people about my story or I think that's, that's a competition I always bring up because it it played a really big role in, in giving me the confidence that I needed to want to pursue music. That's so sweet. Do, do you happen to remember um, who the judges were, or like, or was there a judge that you remember that like, oh, what they said to me meant so much, or? Yeah, um, I think his name was uh, Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Uh, yeah. Mark Wahlberg, yeah. and then Connie or Carrie. What was her name? C- Carolyn. Oh, um, Cassie. Cassie, that's yeah, yeah. right. Cassie. Thornberg. Those are the. Those are the two I remember the most because I think they, they um, I don't remember who the other man was, but yeah, Mark Wahlberg specifically, um, I remember what he said to me was really stuck with me for a really long time. Is uh, There's two things he said that really stuck with me, which one of them was, um, he was like saying that my voice was like a flavor of ice cream, that not everyone's going to love it but the ones who do, it's their favorite flavor. Um, and that, for some reason, really stuck with me because I was like, you know what, that's true. Like, not everyone's going to love me. Not everyone's going to think, I'm, you know, I'm good at everything or whatever, but the people who do like me, the, you know, my followers and my fans, um, they're, you know, they're really going to appreciate uh, me and, um, you know, my my ability to sing and, and stuff. And so that was one of the things he said to me. And, and the other one was... Um, this is, I think, what got me cr- like to cry because um, I had just this crazy dream when I, like, I was a kid. I was like, I want to win a Grammy one day. I want to win a Grammy. And I remember he, he like told me, he's like, I feel like one day I'm gonna watch you win a Grammy. And um, he was like, um, and I really do think that's gonna happen for you one day. So for me, I remember thinking, what? Like that man heard me and saw me and thought that I had the ability to one day be able to win a Grammy. So that was really huge for me. And I just, um, that those two things, I just remember like, I would constantly remember those comments whenever I was feeling insecure or whenever I was on The Voice even, I remember those and think, you know what? Like, it would help just motivate me and give me, uh, yeah, confidence, you know, to, to sing and, um, and then Cassie, I think just her in general, I remember because she was so sweet and she had a lot of things that backed that up um, as well. And she was like um, saying like that she believed in me, you know, and she saw me and she thought that um, she felt that I had star quality. Um, so, so yeah, I just remember thinking, I mean, do they say this to everybody? Like, are they just being nice? <laughs> like, I still can't believe it, but. 
but yeah, and I think it's it's just interesting to think because I don't think, you know, when they said those things, when you give people feedback, you don't you never think about what um, it it actually does for the person. And for me, hearing those things um, just really, really made a big difference in in the way that I thought about myself. Well, so did did winning the competition have any bearing in you? deciding to do the voice or was that something that was already on your radar uh you did the audition for the voice um no i had no idea about the voice i had no idea it was even coming um that definitely gave me like that winning that competition made me realize like okay i can do this i don't have to be afraid to stand up in front of people i don't have to be afraid to sing and and not be perfect i i love to sing and i'm just gonna do it so that kind of led me to a few months after I won, I auditioned for America's Got Talent. And oh, I, I completely butchered that audition. <laughs> and my voice cracked. It was so, I, I was so embarrassed. I was like, I'm never singing again. Like, that was so bad. And then, um, like, six months after that was when I found out about the voice auditions. It was two days before the last the very last audition um, and it was it was their ending in LA so I told my mom I was like oh my gosh like there's new, this there's this new singing competition and um, it's in two days and that's it like it's the last audition and so we drove to LA um, on that Friday it was Wednesday so on Friday we drove to LA and um, I auditioned for the voice uh, and what was that experience like Mm. That was that was crazy because I mean it started with Inland Icon and I was like oh my goodness like okay I won a scene competition this is crazy to auditioning for America's Got Talent and being like okay this was terrible they're not they did not like I did not stand out at all <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then when I went to audition for The Voice. I remember my mom just kind of giving me pep talks and thinks, telling me, you know, like, this is for experience. If you don't get picked, that's totally fine, you know? Like, it's just helping you build confidence. It's helping you, you know, learn to sing in front of people, and uh, and you never know. And I remember seeing the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that were in line. And I don't think there were thousands yet because it was a brand new show, or there could have been, but there's a lot of people, and I remember thinking there's no way they're going to pick me out of all of these people. Why would they see me and think, yes, like you're going to make it through. I was just like, there's no way. And then my mom just was like, why not? And um, so I went in there, I auditioned with my eyes closed, fate, like looking at the ground. I never opened my eyes once. And I sang and they were like, I made it through that first round of auditions and and yeah, and I just kept making them, and then eventually it was the blind auditions, and and yeah, it was it was bizarre for me. I think I, I was like, I can't believe that this is happening to me. Like, I just thought this only happens to those people on TV, like the people on American Idol. Like, this would never happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell me, because um, I don't remember this, how many people turned? And what made you choose who you chose? Yeah, so two people turned around. It was Blake and CeeLo. Um, CeeLo was on the show at the time, CeeLo Green. And I chose Blake because, so at the time, Blake was, I mean, not a lot of people know knew Blake. He kind of was uh, more of like an underground country artist. Um so no one really knew who that was, and I remember thinking, I don't know who that man is. I wanted Adam Levine to turn around, and he did it. And I was so upset when he didn't turn around for me. And I was just like, I have to pick between CeeLo Green and this random guy. <laughs> um, but just just his sincerity, he, was, he just sounded so genuine, and he just sounded like a really nice guy. And he, um, when he talked to me up on stage, um, he just seemed very sincere um, about... Uh, wanting to help and, and believing in me and so yeah I just kind of went with my gut and I was like you know what he seems like a really really nice guy 
I'm just gonna go with him, and you only get like 30 seconds to choose. Yeah. So I was just, I just remember thinking, you know, what, I'm just gonna go with Blake, and I chose Blake, and I think, I mean, that ended up being probably the best thing I could have ever done. Right. So now I now I'm so thankful. I'm like, I'm glad Adam didn't turn around because I know I would have gone with him, and my life would have turned out very differently. Wow. But, um, so, what was it like in terms of? Did, like, did you form any relationships with the other contestants that were on? Because since you made it all the way to the end, like... Yeah, yeah. You definitely build um, build relationships with the contestants. You're living with them for months. Um, we were in L.A. for, like, six months. So um, you're in the hotel, you know, and as you, you just stay there until you get eliminated. So you... Um, you're not allowed to leave or anything so you kind of end up building relationships with the people there because like you're all that you guys have like you know that's all the only people you see but um there are definitely people that I really really um you know stayed in contact with and that's like Dia Frampton who was um uh, on my team as well and um, Casey Weston, who was also on my team. Oh, wait, no, she was not on my team. She was on Team Adam. But, um, yeah, there's there's still a bunch of us that still stay in contact. Not as often, but we definitely do still stay, keep in touch and occasionally reach out to each other and congratulate each other on whatever we're doing or we all follow each other on social media. So there definitely still is connection there. Um, I think we just went through something so crazy and special together that kind of created this bond that even though we don't talk all the time, I feel like that's something that we're always going to ha- share is that like special bond of like being a part of something like that and being a part of the first season, especially where we kind of all just like learned together and grew together on the show. And um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. I still, when I still think about it, I'm like, I can't believe I even went through that. Like it's still hard to believe that, that I got to experience something like that. What was there? Since it was the first season, did you feel like the energy from the the producers or other people that were around working with you, um, like that sense of like we have to make this work or or anything like that, or or like what was that energy like? Yeah, there was definitely like some interesting energy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because, like, I mean, I've been back since the first season to visit. You know, like, I usually go to visit once a, once each season just to kind of say hi to people, meet people and stuff. And it's definitely changed. Like, in comparison to the first season, I, I there was more of, like, an unspoken, like, you guys need to do a good job because if you look bad, we look bad kind of thing. Uh. So it's like, if we mess up, if we you know, do bad up there, we don't practice and we go out there and, you know, butcher it or whatever. It's like, it looks bad, you know, on the, on the creator, on the producers and everybody that's put so much like hard work into it. So there was kind of like a, like that pressure of it. But at the same time, I think everybody didn't really know what it was going to kind of going to come of it. Um, like a lot of the producers, you know, when I go back and visit and catch up with people, they still say, like, to this day, like, there's nothing like season one. Like, just the, like, we all learned from that first season of, like, what to do, what not to do. You know, how can we make it better? Um, and everybody was kind of just, like, new to every a lot of it. Um, especially, like, the, the show had such a different dynamic um, that we kind of all had to learn. But... Um, but yeah, it was, it was crazy. It, there was a lot of great people. It was, it was a lot. It was good. It was, it was really good. Yeah. And was, I guess my big question, I, I, I always wonder is like, how involved was, uh, Blake with you? Like in terms of choosing songs and, um, your performance and arrangements and all that stuff. Yeah. So, um, they weren't super, super involved. They did like, you know, we had an email, like we would email back and forth, kind of like a, kind of like text messaging, but like we did through email, it was weird. 
like there was a, a link we would talk through and so kind of like if we had any questions or concerns that we wanted to talk to them about we could reach out um on camera we actually didn't see them as much in person as they it seemed like on camera right um so we probably saw them once a week and it was only on camera like we didn't have a lot of one-on-one time off camera um so if we weren't communicating through the email then we weren't really talking at all um me and blake um kind of like we just hit it off right away i think i mean he we we shared a lot of similar experiences and like just thoughts and um, you know, things that like made us ins- like our insecurities and things like that would like, um, we just related and I think we, we built, a, a really special bond and relationship that thankfully because of that, we, we did get to talk a little bit more often. Like he'd call me on the phone and we would talk over phone. So we really got to build that, um, relationship. Um, not a lot of the contestants were as fortunate. Um, uh, if they were on a different team, um, but Blake was always working really hard to to be connected and to help as much as he could, because um, I, I think he saw himself in a lot of us. Um, so, but but yeah, it was mainly like on camera. That was kind of the only times we like saw them, whatever they showed on camera. Right, right. Well, yeah. I just found it interesting too because. Blake would go on like these other shows, like with Jay Leno and you know other things, and talk about you. Like he 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 specifically mentioned you yeah. and said, you know, I love Sanya, you know. <laughs> just, yeah. All this is I'm like, okay, they must be really close because <laughs> he talks about her all the time. So that's really neat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We we got really close. Um, he was just like a almost like a father figure. He he felt like he was like my uncle. And, um, you know, I was 16 at the time and, uh, he, he didn't, he doesn't have kids and he saw himself in me and we really just, we did, we definitely created a really special bond and I'm, I'm still to this day so thankful that I went with Blake and he, he played a really big role, especially in the early years, um, and kind of just helping me and motivating me and encouraging me and, um, yeah, he was he he was he was amazing. Yeah. Okay, so for the moment, let's jump backwards just for a second to pre icon, pre voice, all that stuff. So, as a singer, were you strictly a singer, or were you already writing and and playing instruments and stuff by the time I met you? Um, I was. So I started writing. I I thought I wanted to be a writer. Um, I like would write poems. I've been writing since I was in third grade. I probably wrote my first song in third grade, um, or I wrote my first song in third grade, which I still have. It's very, it's not very good, but um, it's like about something about the playground and stuff. But um, I, yeah, I always loved to read and write. I would, lo- I loved writing poetry. I loved writing short stories and. I thought I was going to grow up and be a writer. Um, and then when I was 11 was, I think, the first time I ever even thought about singing. Because I would sing for fun. Like, if I knew that I liked I loved music. I, I knew that I loved listening to music and, like, listening to the lyrics. Um, I loved what they were saying. and um, But I never thought about singing um, until I was 11 and I heard a song from one of my favorite artists. Um, his name's John McLaughlin. I remember hearing a song and being like, I cried. And I was like, I want to make people feel the way that this song just made me feel. Like, I want to write music like this. And that's kind of where my love for singing um, started. So I, I, that's kind of like, I was like, whoa, like I can write and sing to the things that I write. So I started like re- watching interviews of people, like singer-songwriters and and yeah, I just started writing songs and c- trying to come up with melodies. And when I was 15 was when I, I picked up. So I kind of messed around on the keyboard 
Um, I, I played by ear, so I'd like listen to a song I liked and try to figure it out. Um, and then once I was 15, I picked up the guitar again because I tried to learn when I was six. My parents put me in guitar lessons, but I didn't like to practice, so they took me out of guitar lessons. And then when I was 15, I picked the guitar up again. Um, and then that's when I started to actually take it more seriously and learn songs and, and actually write better songs um and yeah so it kind of was there was that four-year gap where I was just writing and like humming melodies that I thought I was coming up with but they were probably just like songs that I knew <laughs> and just putting the melody to my lyrics oh gotcha, gotcha. yeah but um yeah well what about um, your family are, are, are they like do you come from a musical family my mom loves to sing. My mom's a really good singer. When she grew up, she she wanted to be a singer as well when she grew up. Like, that was her dream. Um, she wanted to be a pop star. Um, and she, she didn't. She was not able. Well, she could have. But, um, yeah, she was a teen, teen mom and just dedicated her life to just taking care of my brother. And then I came along. A few years after that and then my sister so she just kind of you know dedicated her life to being a mom and um but on honestly other than my mom like no one no one else really sings I mean we love music but just me and my mom are the only ones that uh, that sing okay yeah and so are you originally from Temecula or? Yeah, so I mean, I've been in Temecula since my fourth birthday. So, pretty much before that, we came from San Diego County. So, oh, okay. yeah, so I mean, I was raised in California. Yeah, that's where I grew up. Okay. I mean, sorry, Temecula. Temecula. <laughs> okay. And, uh, yeah. but I understand now, though, you're not in California, right? No, I am actually now in Franklin, Tennessee. So I moved out here in May. So mid-May, I moved out to Franklin. Um, so I'm right outside of Nashville, 20 minutes. Um, and yeah, I just came out here to pursue music full-time and to work on songwriting some more and work on uh, more collaborations as well. Um, the most of the people that I, most of my contacts and the people that I work with um, are based out of Nashville. Yeah. So I was making trips out here and I just figured, you know what, I'm going to move. That way I can build more relationships, um, you know, than, than I can on a one to two week trip. Right. Yeah. Now, what would you consider your style to be as an artist and as a writer? You know, that's like, it's hard for me. Like, I always, I never know what to say because I wouldn't say I'm pop. Because I like, I, if it's pop, I like more of like that darker pop. Um, but I also love folk. I love singer-songwriter. Um, I love so many genres and I love making, I love writing and singing so many different styles. Like, I love the Lumineers and that kind of, like, folkier, poppy mm. music. Yeah. But I also love, you know, songs like Billie, Billie Eilish would would sing. Um, like, that darker pop. I love old country. Like, I love Johnny Cash. I love Elvis. So, like, I love, like, a lot of that older music as well. So, I don't know. I, I feel like, because I write a little bit of everything. I... I do you have pop songs that I've written and released? And I have folkier songs that I've written that I haven't released yet. I have, I just like, I like music that just sounds like it could be timeless. And like, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I just, I just love, I love it. And I just, I remember when I, cause I was, when I was signed to the label, I remember telling them like, 
they were like, okay, so what do you want to be? Do you want to be pop? You know, what, like, what genre are we going to put you in? I remember telling them, like, why can't I be, like, everything? Why can't I just <laughs> make a song, you know, and just release it? And if it's a good song, it's a good song. Like, it doesn't matter what genre it is. And they were like, no, that's not how this works. You know, we need one thing to market you as, and that's what you're going to be. Then later on, you can do whatever you want. Wow. But, but I remember thinking, like, well, why can't you just – release whatever that is good yeah 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 so <laughs> and so are uh are you um releasing things independently now or are you with a label or yes yeah, so i am fully independent um i had worked with so when i i was signed to universal when i came off with a voice i was with them for a little bit and then once i was independent i did have I was working with labels and management companies here and there that just, like, didn't work out or I just, you know, wasn't really feeling it with them or vice versa. And kind of just led to me coming into contact with people that um, made it possible for me to to sing and write and release music. And um, I started doing TV placements, so I get write songs for television shows and I was like, okay, I get to, you know, sing and write and release music and it's heard. Um, and I get to make a living off of this. So I kind of just started doing that, um, which, and putting off a little bit, like just me as an artist. Um, so now I'm kind of going back into, like I moved out here and I'm trying to focus a little bit more on myself as an artist and like, okay, what do I want to release? You know, what do I want to write? Um, what do I think, like, rep represents me as an artist? Um, but, yeah, but I'm, I'm doing it all independently. Yeah. Okay. And so are you working with, um, like, are you also producing, or are you working with different producers? Um, I mainly do it myself, or I, I have been working with a great producer friend. His name is Nick Gallo. He's based out of Connecticut, and we met over like Instagram and social media. Um, I don't, re I don't even remember how exactly, but he does production, and he had asked me to do a feature on one of his songs, and we worked really well together. It was so easy to work with him, and we kind of just started sending each other songs back and forth. Me featuring on him, him helping me produce stuff of my own. Um, he produced a, a few of the songs I've released, and one of them that recently got placed in uh, Party of Five. It's a it's a newer show on Freeform, um, and uh, yeah, so I, I mainly work with him, and or I, I just do it myself. Okay, yeah. that's very cool. And are you playing um, more instruments now, or 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 do you have a preference as to like what you play and what you write on? I mainly play the piano and the guitar. I do play harmonica. I play the ukulele as well. Um, recently, I just picked up a, a new love for the cigar box guitar. Oh. Which is amazing. It's like it's a guitar made out of a cigar box. Yeah. And it's a they put a pickup in it so you can plug it in and it's like an acoustic electric um, little guitar which is played kind of similar to the ukulele or like a banjo and it's so it's so fun but um, yeah I mainly write on my guitar um, just because it's easier to kind of pick up and take anywhere and I can sit outside I could sit inside I can go somewhere and write. Um, but I, I do, I mean, there's something so special about the piano. I feel like it's just so, so beautiful, especially, I, I mainly write my sad songs on a piano <laughs> and then my more upbeat songs on the guitar. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Um, I did come across, as I was preparing for this, I, I came across, um, a music video, um, that was, um, I guess it was a Christian, um, Something, something you had co-written with a gentleman, and you guys sing as a duet. It looked like you were like on the top of a mountain somewhere, or 
That's right. That's right. Yes, me and Cole Krisky. Oh, okay. So. Um. Yeah. So actually, funny story. Um. So Cole Krisky was actually the winner of one of the SoCal icons. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Okay. So that's. This is actually a crazy story because um, he and I do a lot of shows together. Um, we perform together a lot. People um, have started to request, like, oh, my gosh, like, are you and Cole going to sing together? Um, I love singing with Cole. We actually wrote that that song together, um, and we sing it. But he, yeah, he was the winner of, I don't even remember. So the year after... I won and I had came off of the voice. You guys invited me back to do like a guest performance. Oh yeah. Yeah. For the final. That he won his age group that year. Oh wow. And so, okay. and we met there and he was like, Oh my goodness. Like I saw you on the voice. Can I take a picture with you? And so we took a picture. He was 11 at the time, <laughs> 12. He was 12 and I was 16. Oh. Um, and we have, we still have that picture. It's so funny. And he's like little, and then fast forward to when he four years later when he was sixteen, he he was on Team Blake as well. Oh my god! And so um, I ended up reaching out to him and being like, "Oh my goodness! Like I'm from Temecula as well. I like remember you because they put our picture on the voice that episode because he was saying like, oh, I, he told the same story." Um, and so we ended up re- I ended up reaching out to him and then we started working together and writing. Um, and doing like covers and uh, and stuff together, and we've been working together ever since. Um, and yeah, and then we wrote that song uh, called "Calm" about a year or two ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is he in Tennessee or is he in California? Or- no, he's in Temecula. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, like, when you guys write, like, uh, well, and that was one of my other questions, so I'll tie them together. Um, so when you write now, um, do you use technology to do that? And and how is all of this with uh, COVID-19 coronavirus impacting what you do? Yeah, so I haven't, I mean, I haven't written with Cole specifically yet since I've been here, but I have done online uh, writing sessions. I have a friend, Jenna Baker, he's from Indiana. Um, and we have been doing writing sessions over like FaceTime. Um, and it's, I think with music, I mean, it has obviously affected any like live performances, you know, that we're not able to do, but, um, with, when it comes to writing, I mean, it it hasn't really changed much. The only difference is, I mean, we can't be in a room together. Um, but it's almost like almost there's an, almost no difference, you know, of like just using the computer to sit down and like, as long as we can, the connection is good and we can see each other and hear each other. Um, we can pretty much write just as much and as well as we could in person. So I think when it comes to songwriting, it hasn't affected, um, too much. The only, um, Thing it's really affected is being able to do any kind of shows or performances. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is probably going to be a little weird. I, I like to, when I have guests on, I often like to play this little game. Um, so <laughs> we're, we're going to see if this, if this works or not. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, I can't think of a good way to show it, but hopefully you can see what I have on the screen there. Uh, yes. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna show you pictures. And if you have anything you wanna say about it, you can. And if you don't, you just go, next, <laughs> you know, or whatever. Okay. Okay. Um, I didn't really get a, a lot to choose over, but. Um, okay. Um, let me see what dress I'm wearing. <laughs> okay, yeah, so that picture was the week after I got eliminated, so that's the finale of The Voice. And oh. that... <laughs> wait. Yes, yes. That's the finale of The Voice. Um, so I got eliminated the week before this picture was taken. 
Um, and then they invited us back. All the people that got eliminated that week before, we were invited back. Um, just because they were going to do like a little segment of like the people that just got eliminated last week and they're over there, say hi, kind of thing. Um, and yeah, so this actually was a really fun day for me because I actually got a surprise from Blake this day. Um, he was just, he was, he, we had a, when I got eliminated, um, he, um, was, he felt bad. He felt like, um, he, I don't know. I don't really know why, but um, he was, like, having a hard time, you know, saying that, like, he felt like he could have helped me, done better and stuff. And um, on this on this week, he surprised me with uh, my first car, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, so he, after we took this picture, he was like, hey, like, when you're done, like, I need to show you something. So... Um, I grabbed my parents, and we both we all walked. And he was like, "Meet me by my trailer." So we walked over to his trailer, and there was like a car sitting there. And I was just like, and he comes up to me, hands me the keys, and he's like, "This is yours." And I was just like, "Is this a joke?" <laughs> and he was like, "No." He's like, "I had a bow on it, but I thought it was too much, so I took it off." It's, um, and then yeah, so that ended up being my first car, and the car that I still drive to this day. Um, and, um, Did your yeah, parents know about it? my parents didn't know about it. They were, we were all surprised. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a surprise for them too, which is, it was, I mean, I don't, he doesn't know this, but, um, it was definitely a blessing because we actually didn't have a car at the time. Um, we had one car and my dad needed to drive to commute to work. And so me, my mom, and my sister needed to get to school and we didn't have a car. So I had to get picked up or walk and then she had to walk my sister to school like three miles away Wow! so three miles there three miles back to take my sister to school because we didn't have a car and he gave us that car and it was it became the family car for a little bit my parents bought a second car and then it then it was my car but yeah wow that's incredible what a great story um Oh my goodness. <laughs> so this picture actually is probably like my least favorite picture <laughs> I think I've ever t- had to take. Oh no, it's totally fine. It's everywhere, so I can't escape it. Um, when you type in my name to Google, it's like the first picture that comes. <laughs> um, I just, when I got this picture taken, it was kind of last minute. They kind of didn't tell us what was happening. And they're like, okay, today we're going to take pictures of you go line up kind of thing and I remember thinking are you kidding me like and I'm wearing this sweater (laughs) and they didn't tell us that it was the picture that was gonna show up for every single thing that they did and I remember I was so upset about this picture I just felt like I looked like a realtor (laughs) so I was like I look like I'm trying to sell a house (laughs) a real <laughs> That's great. <laughs> okay. About this um, oh, this is one of my favorites. I think I just... I look so little. I haven't seen this picture in so long. Um, yeah, this was the my first voice audition when I break, uh, sang Break Even. So this was when I got the chairs to turn around. Um, they wanted us to look like we kind of just walked off the street. Oh, how funny. And, like, we walked off the street, you know, into the onto the stage. So they, like, pulled out all this wardrobe, and they're like, what would you wear? Like, if you just were, you know, going to the store or something, like, what would you be wearing? And so I was like, oh, I guess this tank top. <laughs> and then so can they kind of just let me walk out like that. But, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So this was, this was when I sang Price Tag. Um, this was two weeks before I got eliminated and this is probably one of my favorite performances and my favorite outfits. I just thought it was so neat. Um, and then, yeah, this was, this was a fun song to perform. I think it was the only upbeat song that I sang. They, 
made me practice the song like crazy because they were like, oh my gosh, she's shy. Is she going to be able to move up there? They wanted to see me kind of break out of my shell a little bit and like do some more like moving instead of just standing there. Yeah. Um, so they, they originally wanted me to do a dance with the song. And during the rehearsals, it was, I told them I can't dance. Like, this is so bad. Um, and Blake finally was like, you know what? She can sing up beat, but she doesn't have to dance. It's not the kind of artist she is. Um, so, so they kind of changed it up a little bit and let me stand there. But I just had to like move a little bit more than just like be so still. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. Yeah. Remember, you also sang Price Tag when you came back uh, to Icon. Uh, yes. As the guest performer. That's right. I did. <laughs> um. Oh, this is one of my favorites. So this is the week before I got eliminated. I sang The Man Who Can't Be Moved. And I can't remember why we were all standing together on stage. I think we sang together or something. can't remember. But yeah, so that's Dia. She was also my teammate. And we were the last two standing on Team Blake. Um, so she got first on Team Blake, and I got second place on Team Blake. And... um. Yeah, that's that's one of my favorite pictures. Oh. Yeah, I love your smile. Like you, you look so happy. <laughs> um, this was what was that? What was that? Oh, okay, so this was the premiere of season three of The Voice. Um, they invited us all to like premiere it for the first time at uh, the Chinese theater in Hollywood. Yeah, and um, people wanted a picture of us together because. Um, we were both there at the on the red carpet at the same time, and yeah, that was wow. I forgot about this. <laughs> I can't see it until I see it up close. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's that was yes. Yeah, that was the season three premiere of The Voice. Oh, this was 2013. So this was also season three of The Voice. Um. He inv so me and Blake have a song together on his Christmas album, and the year that it was released, he invited me back for the Christmas episode to sing it together on the on the voice. And this day was probably like this is one of my favorite performances I think I've ever done, just because on that stage because it was the first time on that stage where I wasn't a contestant. Um, so, like, ever since I got eliminated off The Voice, I, w I had wanted to sing on it again because I feel like I never really got to enjoy the stage. Like, because there was so much pressure, so much nerves of, like, if I mess up, like, it's on camera, there's nothing I could do to change it. it like, just the nerves of not being, of wanting to do a good job, not wanting to be eliminated. Like, being on that stage was always so stressful. I never really got to like stand on there and actually take it all in and enjoy and sing and have fun. I feel like. Yeah. yeah. So this was the first time I got to like sit up on the stage as a guest, not as a contestant, and actually like remember instead of because like every time I stepped on the stage, I feel like I just like blacked out. Like I didn't remember anything, <laughs> and like I actually got to you know perform and not be nervous for the first time and. And and really enjoy performing. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, oh, this was the cover. Oh yeah, for hiding places. Yeah, this is one of. This was my first song I released off of the label. So as an independent artist. Um, yeah, this was right after I got. Yeah, this was right after I stopped working with Universal Records. Um, I wanted to release something of my own, so I released this song probably, like, yeah, two or three months after. Um, my friend's mom took this picture. Yeah. I remember I was so proud. <laughs> <laughs> and was that in Temecula? Or was it somewhere? That picture is near Temecula, Canyon Lake. Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. All right. Okay, see, that was 
fairly painless, right? Yeah, no, that was good. <laughs> Except for the realtor picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, is there is there anything else that you want to say? Well, okay, let me say this first. <laughs> so um, I think you know through the competition and everything, um, I'd always get up at the end and always give the speech about, you know, pursuing your dreams and, you know, um, that anything is possible, you know, and, and all of that. Um, and with the projects that I'm doing now with my uh, the lead performing arts, that's our motto is embrace the possible, you know. And so anything I do, I'm always hoping that it's going to be inspirational, that someone can take something away from it. So um, especially with these interviews like this, so I, I know for a fact that there are young people that are watching right now who are aspiring singer songwriters and uh, and that have you know other dreams as well. And is there anything that you would like to say um, along the ways of advice or just anything that you'd like to share in that vein? Um, I feel like just from what I've just from my experiences and what I've kind of like learned along the way and having so many ups and so many downs and uh, um, definitely struggling with discouragement at times of feeling like, you know what, maybe I'm not made to do this. Maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I don't love it as much as I think, you know, but just kind of going through all of those mixed emotions and struggles of like, do I keep going? Do I give up? Um, I think honestly, like, it's just as simple as like if you love it, if you really, really love it, like if this is if it's something like you just can't imagine your life without, um, it's it's just a matter of working hard, and being genuine and always being open. I feel like very raw and not being afraid to show who you are, show the ups and show the downs, um, and be be true to who you are. I feel like that's so cliche, but it really just, I mean, it's cliche for a reason because I feel like it's true, you know. It's like as long as you stay true to who you are and what you believe and what you know, um, like what you love is, and, and working hard, I think that's a big, 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 big thing. Is like if you love something, you're going to work hard for it. Um, and if you work hard, I feel like, I mean, you reap what you sow and it's going to, it's going to work out if you if you don't give up. And I think, like, I always hate being like, don't give up and saying all these things. But, I mean, it's true. Like, if you don't give up, you will, you know, get to where you want to get to. And um, it's hard. It's very hard to work hard. And it's, it's not easy, especially when you see all these things. And some kids, you know, some people get there faster. That You know, like, there's so many different stories and so much going on that it's easy to be like, well, I've been working hard. Why did that person just, you know, they just started and how come they're there and I'm still here. And it's like, everyone has their own journey. Everyone has their own story. And it's like, focus on you, focus on what you're trying to say with your music or your art or whatever it is. And, and just don't compare because you're not them and they're not you. So I think, I mean, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's just what I would say. Well, cool. Whatever. Well, if people are interested in finding out more about you or uh, getting your music or anything, um, do you have any places that they can go to find you? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram and Twitter. Um, my Instagram is senia, X-E-N-I-A, dot music. And my Twitter is just my first name, Senya. And then my music is, oh, I'm also on Facebook. Um, and then um, my songs are on all platforms. So they, it's on Spotify, Apple Music, Google, um, Pandora, whatever streaming services um, my music's on there. So. That's awesome. And just real quick, just for my own uh, interest, you mentioned that you know some of your music um, appears on different uh, TV shows or, or whatever. Um, can you name one or two? 
Yeah, so um, the majority are on Freeform shows. Uh, or, yeah, Freeform, the network. Um, so Pretty, Pretty Little Liars um, is one of the shows that I wrote for, the series finale. Um, another show on Freeform called Stitchers, which was a show that I loved, so I was especially excited for that one. Um, yeah, so that was Stitchers, Pretty Little Liars, another Freeform show, which was which aired this year. Um, Party of Five, and then a show on Fox as well called Coupled. Um, I did an indie film, Life Inside Out, and then I can't remember, but those are, yeah, those are, to name a few, those are some of the ones that I've done. That's so awesome. That's so, like, I don't know. I'm a mess right now. I'm going <laughs> to, like, when we're all off the show, it's so I'm I'm going to like tear up and stuff. Um, it's, just, it's just so cool, you know, um, just going back to this shy little girl that I met all those years ago and to look at all your success and stuff. And it's it's just the coolest thing ever. And I'm so proud of you and happy for you. And um, Thank you. Keep in touch. And <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, and thank yeah, thank you for inviting me. I'm I'm ha I'm happy to be here. Happy we got to catch up and talk. And I mean, I know I remember being young and having dreams and watching interviews and you know trying to gain inspiration from people's stories. And I I, I just love you know if if there's anything I don't know that people can learn from whatever I said, then <laughs> I mean that's that's awesome. You know, cause, but yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, so that was Senya, ladies and gentlemen. And that's it for another episode of Believe TV. Hopefully we'll see you guys again next week. Peace. Thank you.